Now we come to slide 25. This might seem like an odd reaction for me to throw in here because it actually comes from the first half of our chapter 16 presentation. Nevertheless, I wanted to include it just to keep you guys on your toes. You'll remember that when we treat an alkylated benzene with KMnO4 water, MnO2, or sodium dichromate, it will convert any and all benzylic carbons to benzoic acid if those benzylic carbons are bonded to at least one hydrogen. So when we consider this reaction, we have to ask ourselves one question. Does this benzylic carbon have at least one hydrogen bonded to it? If the answer is yes, and it is, then it will get converted to benzoic acid. But wait, are there any other benzylic carbons here? Why, yes, there are. It's this one. So we have to ask ourselves this question. Does this benzylic carbon also have at least one hydrogen bonded to it? The answer is yes. Hence, when we run this reaction, KMnO4 water, what occurs is both of these benzylic carbons are converted to benzoic acid. The final product I end up getting is dibenzoic acid. Now that I've introduced you to the concept of orthopara and metadirectors, I hope you're wondering, why are orthopara directors orthopara directors? To begin answering this question, we have to review or remember that all electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions follow this general mechanism. I begin with benzene, and electrons come out of benzene and grab some electrophilic group, making this intermediate. Then a base comes in, steals that hydrogen, and dumps the electrons in like a door closing on a hinge to regenerate aromaticity. Once again, I want you to look at this mechanism and remember that whenever we do an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, the E plus will end up being placed on the carbon atom in the ring that's the juiciest, that is, the one that has the most electron density, the most electron juicy position. Why? Because that's the position that has to reach out with its electrons and grab that E plus. This brings us now to our orthopara directors. As we already discussed, most orthopara directors have atoms bonded to the ring that possess at least one or more lone pair of electrons. To show you what this does, I've chosen this generic orthopara director as an example. And I will prove to you that this oxygen right here pushes electron density into the ortho and para positions. How do I prove that? By drawing resonance structures. So here's what we do. If I have the lone pairs on this oxygen, one of the lone pairs thrust into the ring, and then push those pi electrons on to that ortho position, you'll see that this is a legitimate resonance structure. If I then have these electrons come down to form a double bond there and push these electrons onto that position, this is a second resonance structure. What can I do now? Well, I can take these uh, or this negative charge, push it down there to form a double bond, and thrust these pi electrons onto that position, giving this resonance structure. If that negative charge is then thrust in, and those electrons back onto the oxygen, I go back to where I began. You'll notice then that in all of these different resonance structures, I've got a partial negative charge sitting on the ortho position, on the para position, and on the ortho position relative to this initial substituent. In other words, substituents that have at least one lone pair can donate that lone pair in and put partial negative charges on the ortho and para positions. Hence, these are the positions that have the most electron density. They are the most electron juicy. Hence, these are the positions that will do the attacking or will attack an E plus during an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. I want to state that one more time. Because ortho para directors 
thrust lone pairs into the ring by resonance. If you draw all of the resonance structures, you will see negative charges being placed on the ortho and para positions relative to the initial substituent. Having this partial minus charge on the ortho and para positions juices those positions up, making them the most reactive and the ones that will reach out and grab an E plus during an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. That is why ortho para directors place substituents ortho and para to them. I'm going to recapitulate this again. Because ortho para directors place partial negative charges on the ortho and para positions to them through resonance, these positions are the juiciest. Hence, those are the positions that will place E plus on them during an electrophilic aromatic substitution. That is why an ortho para director gives a mixture of products ortho and para. Question you might ask is, Mike, do, I, do you want me to be able to explain why ortho para directors are ortho para directors on an exam? The answer is yes. And you had best be able to draw all of these resonance structures and use them in your explanation. Now I'll show you why meta directors are meta directors. Remember that meta directors are withdrawers. That is, they suck electron density out of a ring. To show you this, I've chosen this generic meta director as an example. And I will prove to you that it sucks electron density out of the ortho and para positions. How? By using resonance. So if I begin here with this material that has a withdrawing substituent on it, I can suck electrons into that oxygen and suck electrons out of the ring giving me this resonance structure right here. If I then flip those electrons like a door on a hinge to close that positive charge, I end up with a positive charge at this position. If I then flip these pi electrons in to close that positive charge, I end up with another positive charge at this position. If I then push the electrons from my O minus back down and push these electrons in to close that positive charge, I end up going back to where I started. So let's look at this for a moment. You will notice that this withdrawing substituent by a resonance ends up placing a positive charge on the ortho and para positions relative to it. Do you see that? Hence, it deactivates those positions and makes them the least juicy. They, in other words, a withdrawing substituent sucks electron density from the ortho positions and the para position. Hence, by default, the only position left with electron density to reach out and attack an electrophile with is the meta position. I'm going to say that one more time on this slide. Because withdrawers suck electron density from the ortho and para positions by resonance, the only position left with enough electron density to attack an E plus is the meta position. That is why withdrawing substituents are meta directors. You might ask me the question then, Mike, do you want me to be able to explain why a meta director is a meta director on an exam? The answer is yes, and you had best be able to draw all of these resonance structures to prove it. This, I think, is a great place for us to stop our second video from chapter 16. Please take a break, a whiz, a dump, or whatever else you need to do to get recharged. Then return and watch the next and final video segment from chapter 16.